The awesome part about 2021 is that the camera selection is great across the board, and all of these cameras are good at different things, which means when it comes to your project, it may be best to take two or three different kinds of cameras with you to take your project to the next level. However, this presents a very unique challenge in post-production with respect to color grading, and that is going to be camera matching. So when my good friends over at Film Convert told me about Cinematch a year ago, let me beta test it on the spot and come up with my own camera matching workflow, I knew this was something I needed to share with you guys. So today we are going to be talking about my camera matching workflow with the Cinematch plugin. And as always, if you guys are interested in the plugin for yourselves, I have a link in the description down below where you you guys know I got you guys some money off. Without further ado, let's get right into it. All right guys, so today we are going to be matching the Zcam E2 F6 to the Ursa Mini Pro G2. So we have the clip set up here. The Ursa Mini Pro G2 is going to be our main camera, but first we need to make sure to resolve the setup correctly. So go to File, Project Settings, and under your Color Management, simply make sure that your color science is DaVinci YRGB and your timeline color space is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. This should be default, but you need to make sure just in case, otherwise the plugin won't work properly. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to start the matching process by setting up our main camera. So we're gonna to go to Open Effects, and then we're gonna click on Cinematch and drag and drop it onto Node 1 on our main camera, which is the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G2 here. Now the main difference between setting up the main camera and then matching a camera is that when we set up the main camera, we only choose the source profile. We don't set the target profile. So we're gonna drag and drop our information, Blackmagic Design, Ursa Mini Pro G2, Film G5, and Full. And we'll select Apply. We are done so far with the Blackmagic camera. Going over to our Zcam clip now, we're going to do the same thing except we're gonna add a node first. And then we're gonna drag Cinematch onto node two. You'll see why in a second. And now we'll set up both the source and the target. So our source is the Zcam, E2, Zlog2, Zraw, and a full data range because we are using EXR. If you're using ProRes, you would select limited. But because both of these have raw data rates, we are going to use the full. From there, we are going to set up our target profile. And so we're gonna choose Blackmagic Design, Ursa Mini Pro G2, Film Gen 5, and again, full. Now you see we have a conversion that's happened over here. Going back to our Blackmagic camera, left click on it, and grab still. So left click on the image and grab a still, then go back to the Zcam, open up your waveform, then open up your gallery and play the still. You can close the gallery. Now you can see here when we move this left and right, we can see what's happening on both sides of the image. What we want to do now is we want to match those together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna left click on node one select HDR. So remember, black magic's on the right, Zcam on the left, same thing on our waveform. And I'm gonna start with the offset. I'm gonna bring it down until the top of my waveform, the highlights match up right about there. And moving left to right, I'm gonna bring down my midtones. So that matches up, and that's about right right there. Now we have to be careful because Looks like our highlights are doing something a little bit different here again. So we're gonna push up the highlights again. And I'm gonna overshoot with the highlights a little bit and then bring down the mid-tone so they're matching up. And now you can see we're pretty good across the board with our information here. Everything is looking pretty good and pretty close. So now what we can do is turn this off since we've done the exposure correction. Go back to node two and apply Rec. 709 transform. The same thing with the black magic, apply Rec. 709 transform. Now off the bat, both of these are looking pretty close. We just have some minor white balance issues, but we will go through 
and clean those up as well. You will notice that the Z cam is a little bit softer. That's because we have a shallower depth of field. So in node one, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase that midtone detail a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring down my sharpness a little bit. Sharpen it up um, right about there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check my false color. So we can use false color tint and then false color tint. And we can see here that she has a little bit more purple in her shirt than we do over here. We can get some more magenta in here, which means our shirt's too green. We don't even see green in the highlights here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move that over just a bit to right about there. Now when we come back here, these are looking super similar already. I'm gonna go ahead and check the false color temperature next on both of them. And I'm just gonna cool down the Z cam just a bit. Not too much, just a bit. These two are still looking pretty spot on. And so now that we have that pretty much balanced out, we're gonna go ahead to our open effects overlay and go into our HSL curves. And from here, we can do something pretty powerful, which is match up some colors. So I'm gonna click on the source dropper here and select my sky. And then I'm gonna click on my target dropper and select the sky of the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G2. And I'll do the same thing with the grass over here. I'm gonna select the grass, and I'm gonna select the grass on the Ursa Mini Pro G2. And now they're matching up pretty closely. Let me go ahead and take a look at our vector scope here. And I'm gonna saturate this image just a little bit more on the Z cam side, just a little bit more. And the same thing on the black magic side. And I will say this, these greens, that's what we have going on here. We can warm this image up just a bit, just a bit to match these greens up because they're in the same round, but I was noticing something was different. We're gonna go back to this curve here. We're gonna go to our hue. We're gonna increase the saturation a bit. Just a little bit more. Those greens. Now they're really matched up close here. And that, my friends, is how we match those camera profiles. You cannot tell that this was not shot on the Ursa Mini Pro G2 as well. And while there may be a few minute differences here, we don't have the time with respect to a YouTube tutorial to really dive in and nitpick the image, but overall, you would not be able to tell besides maybe the minor difference in the shirt that these are on different cameras, and it doesn't really even feel like it's a different camera. It really just feels like our white balance is slightly off in one direction or another. But again, that is the beauty of all of the color tools that we have here, because we could really go in and dive in and pick apart both of these images to really kind of try to solidify that feel exactly where we want it to get them a little bit closer to each other. So. We have many options at our disposal here to really make that impact that we're looking for overall. And that is what makes this tool powerful when it comes to camera matching. That only took us a few minutes and a few clicks to pretty much get these images on the same playing field and so that they have the same feel and don't have a discontinuity in our storytelling. When it comes to talking about camera matching on the channel and in my DaVinci Resolve color grading course, I am generally teaching you guys ASUS, the Academy Color Encoding System, because it is free and simple to use. However, Cinematch just takes this to an entirely different level. And the thing that I love about Cinematch especially is it allows you to keep the image fidelity with respect to the color science of the camera that you're using as your A-cam. Meaning if you like the look of the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G2 and you wanna match your Z-cam and your Sony's to that specific look without getting rid of that, you're going to be able to do that. And the same thing holds true if you like the look on Sony cameras. You're going to be able to match that to your Blackmagic cameras and to your
your Z cam cameras or any camera that's really supported in Cinematch. So as always guys, I have that link in the description down below so you guys can get a discount on this plugin if you are interested. And if they don't have your camera available, still visit that link down below and hit the request camera button on their website. And these guys are super good at getting to it and it may already be in the works. If you guys like this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications if you have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. My beautiful people, if you are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, Remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired guys, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I will see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.